In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to unpackage your CXP Series 8 printer from the box. So the first thing you want to do is remove the package with your CD driver, remove your two cleaning cards from the package, and remove your power cable and USB cable. We're going to need to remove the top layer of packaging from the printer. It is important that you remove the two laminate cassettes from the packaging. You do not lose them. So to remove them, just pull them straight out, put them to the side to use later. We will now remove the accessories from the box. Remove your cleaning roller along with your long cleaning roller, your card exit hopper, and your card input hopper. So now to remove the printer from the box, this is actually a two-person uh, lift. So you will need an assistant to be with you to safely remove the printer from the box. The printer is packaged with a handle. So one person needs to grab the handle and lift up with the printer out of the box. Once that printer is up, the other person will just help steady it and set it onto the table. Now that we have the printer out of the box, we need to remove the carrying strap. So just remove the carrying strap from the printer. Now that the printer is out of the bag, we just need to remove a few extra pieces of packing tape to help secure the printer during, during shipment. So remove any of the blue packing tape that you may find on the printer that will be on the doors. Then also press the release button for the cover and remove the foam that protects the printer cover during shipping. So at this time, let's put the accessories that we took out of the box earlier onto the printer. So first, let's take the card input hopper. Simply just slide it into place and make sure it clicks into the printer. You will take your card output hopper. The card output hopper attaches with some slides to the exit side of the printer. So all we have to do is simply attach it to the side of the printer and slide it down into place. Next, we'll need to install the cleaning holders. So again, press the blue latch button to open the cover and lift the cover open. You have the cleaning roller that we took out earlier. First, we need to make sure that we remove the blue tape and the liner from the cleaning roller prior to installing it into the printer. So with the liner removed, you can discard that, and you will install the cleaning cassette simply into the printer. Lastly, we have the larger cleaning roller. Again, discard the blue tape along with the liner, and install this into the cleaning roller by pushing down and then up. We will now install the iSeries True Colors ribbon into the printer. So you will remove your ribbon from the packaging. You have two cleaning rollers inside of the, the packaging. Just put those aside and reserve for future use. When you remove your roller or your ribbon from the packaging, you'll notice we have a blue core and we have a purple core. We want to verify that the purple flange meets to the purple hub in the printer and that the blue flange will meet to the blue hub. When you first go to install the ribbon, the ribbon is adhered to itself. You just need to release the ribbon from itself and make sure that it securely attaches to the blue core. Take your purple flange and match it to your purple hub. Push in and down to secure the ribbon. Make sure that the ribbon is securely engaged to the gray core. Now I can pull ribbon out and install the blue core. Same process. Push in and secure. Once you have both cores installed in the printer, verify that the ribbon is underneath the color ribbon sensor. We will now install the transfer film. Remove the transfer film from the pack. Again, green flange core, white flange core. The green flange core needs to go to the green hub, the white flange to the white hub. When installing, once again, pull on the transfer film until it releases 
from itself. Wind it so that it adheres to the cores. So when installing this, we actually want to install the take-up side first with the white cord. So we will install the white flange to the white and install it correctly. Verify that it engages on the hub and that it's underneath the sensor. We will then roll the transfer film down to the supply side and once again install it into the printer verifying that it engages onto the hubs again and that it's underneath the sensor. Now that we've loaded the ribbon and the transfer film, we can go ahead and close the main door. We will now load laminates into our ZXP Series 8. So we want to open up the laminate door. You will notice that we have a blue spindle and a yellow spindle corresponding to the top roll or the bottom roll. This will correspond to our cassettes. So I have a blue cassette for the top and I have a yellow cassette for the bottom. So we need to remove the media from the packaging. So when you remove the media from the packaging, you need to discard the two foam protector blocks that come in for shipping. Take note that this is a blue core, so this would be for my top laminate, will be installed in my top cassette. So to do this, I need to open my cassette and then I will orientate the laminate into the cassette. Notice that there is a slot in the cassette for the thumb wheel on the laminate. I need to make sure that the laminate fits in this way. If you install it backwards, it will not churn properly or feed correctly once installed in the machine. So always verify that the thumbs match to the slot in the cassette. Another reason to verify that the core is properly placed, if you try to install this backwards, it will not fit on and you cannot install it onto the hub as you can if it is correctly oriented. So now that I have my laminate roll in the cassette, I need to remove the sticker with the item description on it. I also need to remove some of the laminate because this will be a very jagged edge and we want to ensure that we have a clean edge. So once I remove it, I want to have some of my laminate exposed from the cassette. Covering the white roller, and now when I close my cassette, I will now be able to trim my laminate flush and even with a straight edge to the cassette open. So to get our straight edge, we'll just take a pair of scissors and carefully and evenly cut the laminate. Now we need to verify that our laminate is even with the lip. It should not protrude from the enclosure. So if it is, use the thumb wheel and pull the laminate back so that the laminate is not protruding from the lip. So to load the laminate cassette, we'll take our cassette, slide it onto the spindle. I will then need to secure the laminate cassette to a latch and I will hear an audible click and I will see this latch engage. Once you hear that and see that the latch is in this position, your laminate cassette is successfully installed. So now we'll load our bottom laminate into the cassette. Again, yellow to yellow to yellow. Always verifying that we have a match in the colors. So it's exactly the same process that we do for the top. You load the, the roll into the cassette, close the cassette, trim the edge, and then verify that your edge is not protruding from the lip. We will now install the cassette into the printer. So once again, load the cassette onto the spindle, and then we will twist into position, verifying that it latches. Now that we have the top and the bottom laminate loaded, we need to close the cover. We will now load cards into our printer. So we need to load our input hopper. So we just need to open up the input hopper so we can gain access to put cards in. Cards typically come in a block of 100. We want to make sure that when we handle these cards, we are not touching the surface of the cards. We will always handle them. We'll now load cards into our printer. So we need to load our input hopper. So we just need to open up the input hopper so we can gain access to put cards in. Cards typically come in a block of 100. We want to make sure that when we handle these cards, we are not touching the surface of the cards. We will always handle them from the edges or as I am on the band itself. 
take some of these cards out and then insert them into the hopper. The hopper will have a natural fan look to it that is normal and that shows that you have installed them correctly. So just continue installing the rest of your cards. Once you're done, close the door. Continue loading your cards into the hopper up to the maximum capacity of 150 cards in the hopper. Once you've loaded your desired number of cards in the hopper, close the door. Should you want to refill the hopper while the printer is working, you can open the hopper door and refill the cards if desired. Also, at the end of the day, if you wish to secure your cards, you can easily just remove your hopper and secure it in another location. We will now connect your ZXP Series 8 printer to a communication source to a PC. You have two options. First option is a USB port. It must be a 2.0 USB speed. Or you have an Ethernet port that you can connect. And this is a 10 base 100 system that you can install. You must select either one, but you cannot have both connected at the same time. You will also need to connect a power cable to your ZXP Series 8. First thing, verify that the power switch is in the off position. Then you can connect a power lead to the back of the printer. The power supply in the printer is an auto switching power supply. So 110 or up to 240 and the printer will function correctly. You can now turn on your ZXP Series 8 printer. Flip the power switch from the back of the printer from the off to the on position. You will hear the machine make several noises while it goes through the, its initialization process. It will be determining the ribbon size as well as the transfer film size during this process. These are all normal sounds of the operation. Now that it's done initializing, you should see the message warming. The transfer station is now beginning the process of warming up so that it can do the transfer of INTM to a card when we print. This process normally takes around four minutes to complete. Now that the printer shows ready, you're able to send your print job to the printer. All alarm messages or warning messages will also display on this control panel. If you need further information, refer to the user's guide as to all the warnings that may appear. We have a few other options on the, our ZXP Series 8. You have a single card feed input hopper. So if I wish to manually feed one card at a time, I can select this option in the driver and then I would be feeding one card at a time manually into the front of the printer to be accepted instead of coming through the input hopper. Also, should a card fail in the printing process, it will be contained in a reject bin which is underneath here. To gain access, again, press your cover release button, lift the cover open, and the card will be underneath. The card could be in here if it's failed in the printing process or even in an encoding process such as mag stripe encoding. Should you experience any card jams in your ZXP Series 8 printer, first thing that you need to do is open up the top cover by pressing the blue button on top and then we can open the idler cover to the printer. This will give us access to where the cards are. You should be able now at this point in time to reach in and grab your card and remove it from the printer. Some common things to check for to prevent card jams is that your cleaning roller is completely installed and seated in the tabs correctly, that you have put in your cleaning cassette as well, and that it is seated properly into the printer. Should you have a card jam in the laminator side of your ZXP Series 8, open the cover, and then first verify where the card is in the laminate station. Most of the time you will want to remove the heated roller assembly from the laminator by removing the four thumb screws. Once you have these four thumb screws removed, we will be able to slide the heated roller assembly out of the printer. Before reinstalling this, should you have a card jammed in it and you need to turn these rollers, you may wait to have this station cool down as the gears may not be in alignment with the gears inside of the printer itself. But use extreme caution as this is extremely hot and you can burn yourself. Remove your heated roller assembly from the printer. Remove the card should it be jammed in this area. Because during that process, 
the gears on the heated roller assembler may have moved. We want to make sure that this is cool enough that we can move the gears to correspond to the gears inside of this station when we have to go back to reinstall it to make sure that it seats properly. To be able to move your card through this station, we have a tool on the front. If you haven't already done so, taking the tape off when you first got your printer, go ahead and remove the tape. You will then just need to twist the tool to remove it from the printer. It has slots in it to act as a screwdriver to be able to engage on the rollers to be able to help churn the rollers and to move the card in the printer. Be careful with this. Many of these rollers will only move in the direction of the exit. You do not want to move it in the direction back to the printer as you can cause damage. So once you've cleared the card jam, we need to reinstall our heated roller assembly back into the printer. So do so, slide the heated roller assembly into the printer. Should you hit resistance and the cartridge will not go in any further and you see that you have a visible gap around, then you need to go ahead and realign the gears on the back of the heated cassette assembly to match with the printer until the cartridge will slide completely into place. Then reinstall the four thumb screws into the heated cassette cartridge and resume your printing.